Okay, I'm going to mute myself. <laughs> and I will probably... Sure. Thank you, Samantha. You're listening to the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. 1935, the Lions win the NFL championship. The Detroit Tigers take the World Series. The Red Wings bring home Lord Stanley's Cup. Joe Lewis begins his rise to world domination. This transforms the Motor City into Detroit City of Champions. All right, Detroit City of Champions, the podcast. It's based on a trilogy of books called Detroit City of Champions, written by Charles Avison. I'm Jamie Flanagan, and we are just gonna we're just gonna talk about it. We're unpacking the story of the 1935 year, 33 championships in the city of Detroit, the state of Michigan. It was it was a beautiful time for sports in greatest, the city. Greatest season in the history of American sports. I made this. I've said it. I've said it. I don't even know how many times I've said yeah. it, but I've said it numerous times. Yeah. And um, in the fact that we have an entire show based on one season, yeah, um, like we're either the most long-winded people ever, yeah. or there's actually so much content that um, that you know, I mean, we haven't even gotten through a fraction yeah. of it yet. You're you're a little younger than I am, and uh, I was really unaware of this story. Uh, and by the time we started, you know, it's 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 these people are gone. I mean, these uh, these champions uh, are long gone because exactly. there's. Uh, uh, so we're only looking back at it at history, but joining us, um, Tom. Well, I was going to ask, what's this guy still doing sitting yeah, here? We're about know. to move on to the Red Wings. <laughs> we're about to move on to hockey. And there's this guy here that we brought in for the Lions episodes and the Portsmouth Spartans episodes. And he's, Jamie, what's this guy Tom, doing Tom still is just sitting passionate. here? He's passionate about sports. and <laughs> He was and, a special guest once upon a time. And yeah, and, he and just, he's still here after like. And shows I just so. love I just love having Tom here. Yeah, Tom's our friend. Tom's on the Tom's you know on the show. He's about he's a regular man. We were voting on it, and we're, Tom's not a special guest anymore. He's so, a regular. Whenever he wants regular to hang out, spot. Absolutely. He can he can hang out and listen because that's all I do is I just sit and I listen to you tell the stories because uh, you've researched it, uh, and, and that's a lot of what you did, Tom. You did a lot of research uh, on the Lions part of it, and you're a yeah. big Tiger fan. And Joe Lewis, that's that's my special. Day. I can't wait to yeah. uh, get you and uh, Joe Lewis Junior. Three uh, on a, on a chat together here. Oh, I'm so looking that, forward that, to oh, uh, that. Would be yeah. We oh, haven't we even will. got it's, to the uh, Joe. Yeah, we, whatever you do, don't miss that one. So that's coming up. Yeah, we um, haven't even got to the Joe Lewis. Yet. Yep. So to. that'll Joe be Joe Lewis part. Of the, that's going to be anyway. That's I can't wait. To that'll that be after the. Yeah. Uh, uh, third of the big championships so the first was the tigers the second was the lions and yeah. then came the well the tough thing one of the old time hockey come, the, coach. come the red wings yeah but you know <laughs> the tough thing about this story is actually organized you know like is actually kind of putting it you know it all happens at the same time right you know so you have to kind of decide what order you want to tell the story mm -hmm. even though they all you know i think it helps to you know give it in the books i wrote it from the perspective of joe lewis first right and then the Tigers, Lions, Red Wings. Um, it, you know, that's that, that was the order. The the because that's basically when they, they all. I, I I timed it based on when their their signature moment of each of the year came. Okay. Um, it, but uh, like I say, you know, we're putting Joe Lewis in after the championships, and I don't I, I don't think you can go wrong because his you know his story is um, you know, it's almost kind of like the you know a huge you know big hurrah. You know. Well, well, Joel carried the tradition after thirty five. You know, he he wasn't oh, champion yeah. until thirty seven. Yeah. But they always referred to him as the as the yeah. city of champions, and, and he continued it. Oh, absolutely, right. absolutely, yeah. But thirty five is you know Joel's. I don't want to start going down that path mm -hmm. because we're right. start we'll start going down it. But yeah. but uh, yeah, thirty five. It's almost like a when we we'll get we'll definitely focus on this component of the story when the time comes, but. 35, a lot of times people just go, oh, yeah, Joe Lewis came, you know, Detroit was, it was a big year for Detroit or for Joe Lewis in 1935. And then they'd start jumping into like the Max Schmeling fight and the championship fight and then all the stuff that happened after. And it's like it, a lot of times, just like the rest of the 35 story, it gets skipped over. And um, along that, you know, that that's a segue. I'm segueing using that into the story of the Red Wings because I say it in the book. Um, you know, you know, the lions were probably the most forgotten team, but like in modern day, like what the, you know, the red wings of 1935, as much as we celebrate the red wings, uh, the red wings are an iconic, you know, we're a hockey town, you know, the red wings are, I mean, synonymous with Detroit. It's one of the most proud hockey organizations in the NHL. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a revered hockey organization, but of all the, the names and teams and players and faces of this huge, proud red wings history, none are as forgotten or unknown as the 1935 Detroit Red Wings. Yeah. And it's an absolute 
in like what by my goal for telling the story and i'm really excited to be getting in the red wing i'm really excited to get in all of it but yeah the red wings like it's just one of the most phenomenal stories that is that there is i mean like the most phenomenal hockey story the most phenomenal sports story you know i mean there's there's the screenplay for the movie like i just can't wait to actually see this thing on the big screen and to see it bring out because it's got every single component of every great um i mean the, the whole city of champions season does but the red wing story is just unbelievable yeah it's really unbelievable and it were and i was telling you before we did the show it it merits it's like a fine wine or like a fine whiskey or whatever like this it merits you know you know savoring it it merits yeah. freaking enjoying every drop and really exploring this thing from the beginning all the way through what happened because we said how are we going to talk about this before yeah. we before we go to that uh two things though one thank you for listening people are, are, are oh yeah we got checking in to, we talk in. to the view yeah so thanks for listening thanks for joining us uh, on this journey uh if you haven't uh if you just found us uh subscribe to it like it uh tell a couple likes of likes really help uh, comments really help yeah. sharing it you know every little thing helps tell a couple of friends out, yeah. too that uh, that that helps as well so thanks for thanks for helping out and uh being here and joining us uh, on this journey and uh last time we were together i, I was teasing you guys uh, about a comment that we got on one of our youtube videos yeah uh from a relative of one of the people we were talking about and we'll get to that before the end of the show so you got to stick around and find mm -hmm. out who that was again uh and and we'll get into that before the end. Sure. But we, you and I, as we were talking about, what are we going to talk about when we talk about the Red Wings? Uh, I go, yeah. Tell me, how do you want to talk about the Red Wings? So you were like, well, we got to talk about how the NHL was born first. Exactly. And so that's that's where you got to start. You guys, so we got to take another step back. So we got to take. It's really a couple steps back. Yeah. Because we, it's a step like you know the the great you know the, there's the, the you know the Red Wings you know the red the, the, the this it, you have to start at the beginning and I think it's right. worth it every once in a while just take a, a further step back talk about the origin of the game itself the origin of hockey the origin um you know of the NHL because the red you know the the story of the Detroit hockey is um somewhat inseparable from the from the from the you know the genesis the growth sure. the explosion of hockey in uh North America it's it's inseparable so um, so, but you got to get to it first. You got to, there's, you know, there's, there's much that happened before Detroit, Detroit uh -huh. with, and that's why really the first component. So we're, so, you know, to summarize what Jamie's saying is we're going to start at the beginning, yeah. you know, in, you know, in the, on the first day there was light. This is like the <laughs> Genesis, like, you know, the beginning of, you know, hockey. Sure. Take me back in time. Yeah. Where are we going? Um, so, uh, so I, the first thing that I want to tell the, 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 you know, you guys in the viewing audience at home is this is a critically important concept to understand. Okay. Because whenever we're talking about the Detroit Red Wings, one of the most the first things that comes up is the words "original six. Yeah, okay? and it's and we talked we, talk, a we about mentioned that it already. once in this, but we, it's worth definitely worth putting into the context of this mm -hmm, show. Mm -hmm. Is that that's a, I call it a misnomer, okay? Because the original six, a lot of times we think of the original six, we think that the Red Wings were one of the six original hockey teams, right? And that's incorrect. It's that as we're gonna see that it's absolutely that's, uh, incorrect. is that post World War II. Exactly. So the original so, six is like a post World War II. What term. happened? Exactly. What happened right. was is that hockey. I mean, hockey evolved as we're going to see. You know, the, the beginnings of hockey go all the way back, and we're 1892 is when this is when it begins. Mm -hmm. Um. And but uh, uh. So, um. So yeah. So it. Uh, what was going to say. Um. Oh, what was I going to say, man? Um. So it just goes back. So right. um. So but the, the, the misnomer is is that the the great the world war ii and the great depression were such an upheaval it was such an upheaval to hockey because mm -hmm. hockey was incredibly unstable at this point and so there was teams so like there was there was a there was teams folding left and right and out of the you know after the great depression after world war ii there was only six left you see and so the so when they say original six they're like these are the the six teams that survived the upheaval of the great depression yeah. and um in world war ii and so that is what it ta it's talking about that's the you know that's the summer so it's original six in that context and you know it refers to that 1950s era because as we're going to see here there was much much hockey that took place before you know detroit hockey came into play and it's really the you know the beginning of this story is the build-up and the lead-up to yeah how the how the detroit hockey was born and it's um so anyways without further ado um the the you know the the uh one of the things i think i love about the early early origin of hockey yeah is that it was about the cup 
in no like in no other sport like every other sport that's ever been out yeah. like everybody wants to win the championship of course yeah um but in hockey it was about the cup you see it was like the it was like they you know the, 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 there was so many different league champions there's so many different leagues amateur professional there was like a cauldron of all these different teams mm -hmm. and they all wanted the cup and it was the cup that they all pursued and it was the cup that was a fascination of these teams and players and I actually wrote it into the screenplay, the movie, the very opening scene of the um, of the Red Wings uh, of of, um, of the of the Red Wings episode is the cup. Okay. That's it, all that it is. It's the opening scene because that is what these that is what these early hockey players craved. Mm. That is what there was something about the, that cup that drew these people on. Well, there was a reason for that. Well, and the, re and the reason was they would get their name on it too. Well, that was a big thing, absolutely. So yeah. we'll, we'll get to that point. Yeah. So, anyways, there. So yeah. So the um, so the idea is is that it starts with the cup. In this, in the Stanley Cup is born, um, is is 1892 is uh, uh Sir wow. Fred. So Sir Frederick Arthur Stanley, Governor General of Canada, um, announced on on March 18th, 1892, Hello, that he was going to be uh, commissioning a silver trophy for the. Um, and only, and I'll actually read the quote. Actually, that's the first clip they have, Jimmy. I actually, have it on my phone. So give me one quick, quick second to grab. Sure. Phone. So that's so, the first clip. I, I love the pictures of the old Stanley Cup because you have this vision uh, of the the big barrel uh, of the cup, and then the, the 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 original cup attached to the top. But the the very original cup was is, is, it was a skin much skinnier. Yeah, that's the first. That's the first uh, clip we have to a put skinnier, on the screen. That, a skinnier, skinnier well, creation. Well, skinnier. You'll see much more. You get the very first yeah. cup. If you put that slide up, the first slide with actually has a picture of um, uh, uh, Lord Stanley on it. You can see just how much skinnier the the cup was. Um, in fact, it was just the punch bowl from the top. That's all that the original. Cup Do I have the right was. thing up there? Uh, no, that's that's one of the last slides. Okay. So there we go, right there. But you can see that's the cup. Yeah, that was the original. Sure, all the bands that were added. I mean, the, the cup that they use now is not even the original. The right, original right. is is you know in the Hall of Hockey Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. But I want to read you. So here's the quote from um like when when he first released this cup. You know, this is this is actually Lord Stanley, um his own words talking about like his met you know reasons for doing it. So this is so he so he'd actually come. To, he was he is from England. He came to he came to Canada to be the governor general. Montreal was where it was based, where, uh -huh. was where he was based. And he saw this. He, he fell in love with hockey when he came to Montreal. And so he says right here. So this is cool. I have for some time been thinking that it would be a good thing if there were a challenge cup, which should be held from year to year by the champion hockey team in the Dominion of Canada. There does not appear to be any such outward sign of a championship at present. And considering the general interest, which matches now elicit, and the importance of having the game played fairly and under rules generally recognized, I am willing to give a cup which shall be held from year to year by the winning team. Oh. So you can see that he commissions this cup um, towards the, I mean, towards an almost abstract, like just the goal of like the best team in Canada, uh. Uh, you know, getting this, you know, getting this trophy. And so anyways, and so um, he wasn't, I read that he wasn't even, and so that just to let you know, the original cup in today's dollars would be about $1,400 is how much the original cup costs. Okay. A punch bowl, huh. they, they, they call it a rolls bowl, but up to, you know, you can see in the picture, it's a punch bowl. Um, so anyways, um, so the very, so the very first year, 1893, that they put this, this, uh, this cup out, uh, Lord Stanley wasn't even there. He actually got recalled back to England. Oh, and so he didn't even see the first Stanley Cup, ah. right? <laughs> yeah. And so, anyways, um, Don't. so that so, but he did leave a group called the trustees that were in charge of this. They were like basically the you know that it was it was left in their care to develop you know what these challenges would be, the rules, all these different things. So in 1893, um, the fir the first Stanley Cup, the first you know as it became quickly known, the uh, Stanley Stanley Cup, Lord Stanley's Cup. Or just Stanley Cup, it became known. I forgot the exact year, but it was early on, right around the same time that it's uh, actually be called Stanley Cup or Stanley's Cup. Um, so the trustees declared the top Montreal team the winner. Um, so that, uh, uh, the, it was a, there was two Montreal teams, and they they fought it out, and then they declared one of those Montreal teams um, the winner of the cup. All right, okay, and that's one of the second slides we have. Um, you can see the um, see this team just to show you real quick. Um, and so, but here's the thing, this is what this, and this is, it's, it's it, this, me telling you that this is the first team to win is more than just, just, you know, fill, oh, there's the filler. cup on the ground in front of them. Exactly. Oh, and this is great. more than just filler, you know, to, to say this, um, because 
the fact that the trustees were from Montreal yeah, and they awarded the top Montreal team, the cup, oh, look at those mustaches. Yeah. But it, so it, so it, Aaron Rodgers, sit down. So anyway, so it, here's the thing is, is that, um, is that, uh, um, the fact that these trustees awarded the cup to one of these Montreal teams, the trustees are from Montreal. This rankled Ottawa oh. because like they didn't, Ottawa had no say. They didn't get to send their team to compete for it. And right. they're like, this cup was supposed to go to the top team in the world in Canada. We're better than you are. Yeah. How'd you get the cup? We didn't get a chance to play for it. Yeah. You see them. So that's, you see what I'm saying? That, that evoked competition, that cup, it was the, the it was the cup, which led them to say, we want to, we want to take that from you. You see what I'm saying? Mm. And so anyway, so this, and the also one of the things that's really interesting about this photo, I don't know if you can zoom in at all on it, no. but, but uh, you'll notice on their chest, if you can see it closely, yeah, you see a winged wheel on their chest. Oh, that's okay. really why I wanted to get that picture up there too. There's a, there's, there is a winged wheel on their chest and that team, his name is the Montreal winged wheels. And so, um, so keep that in your brain because oh, it is. There's it, like two wheels. There's it, two there's wings two, on it. There's two wings and a wheel on it. So just keep that in your mind because in like three, it's like three shows from now, that's going to become a very relevant concept. <laughs> Holy okay. Smokes. All yes. Right. So, anyways, that's why I love that photo too. I have not seen that one for some reason. I think I've seen. I have pictures of their jersey, but I just hadn't seen that specific. That's photo. That's great. They're yeah. All... So I was excited to get that on the show. So, um, so anyways, and so be, so that with, with that challenge in mind, um, the following year, uh, Ottawa is included. And so there, so the best team from Ottawa is brought into Montreal and there's two. And so, the, and there's a, they have a tournament. It's a three team tournament with two Montreal teams, one, one team from Ottawa and Montreal wins it. They weren't that Montreal wins the first Stanley cup as we know it finals. Mm -hmm. And so that, so Montreal once again, wins in 1894. So anyways, over the course of the years, um, originally it was really like kind of an, you know, an amateur concept, but in 1906, you know, like the cup became more and more sought after. And so these teams wanted to kind of, I guess you say a game, the system, and they started bringing in the best players from other cities, paying them money to be on their team. And that's uh -huh. the, you know, the rise of professional hockey is, yeah. is in pursuit. They want, you know, these cities and teams wanted the cup and that begins in 1906. So the first, you know, pros are paid um, to, you know, to, to become this. And the, and the team that gets the, actually the, the very first team to have um, professionals on their team is uh, the Montreal Wanderers in 1906. Mm -hmm. And so 1908, it's almost becomes official. The Allen Cup um, is introduced for amateurs and the Stanley Cup from now on going forward after 1908 is just for professionals. Okay. So that's, you know, so it's, and so um, in 1910, the NHA, the NHA is formed. Um, it's a national hockey association. So because it had proved it was the best league in Canada by winning the cup four times in a row. Mm. Right. And so just to give you an idea of some of the teams that were in the, the original NHA, uh, the cobalt silver Kings, the, uh, Haley Berry comets, Montreal Canadiens, Montreal shamrocks, Montreal wanderers, Ottawa senators and Renfrew creamery Kings. So these are the, those are the first teams in the NHA. And then 19, so, so they win four straight uh, cups after, after they're formed, mm -hmm. after the league is formed. 1915, um, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's another league out in the far west called the P PCHA, which is the Pacific Coast Hockey Association. And their team in 1915, after a couple of negotiating, whatever like this, they sent one of their teams out to um, play against the NHA. And the Vancouver Millionaires from that Pacific, that Western yeah. League, wins the cup oh. and they take the cup out west to vancouver uh, so for so now the cup is gone i mean like now there's no montreal doesn't have the cup ottawa doesn't have the cup it's gone from these eastern provinces hey and it's taken out west you see what i'm saying so now it's becoming this thing where they're like well the cup started here how you doing buddy we're no longer the best you know league the best yeah. league just took the cup man. Uh -oh. <laughs> you know? well, so got, the cup's gone it's gone it, in the west it got know? transferred exactly so so now it be, you know you can see that the salivate you know like they're like man we got to get the cup back you know and the thing about it now is that at the fact that a different league had taken the cup from the nha now they're like, well, how good is the NHA? They don't even have the cup anymore. Yeah. You, see what, you see what I'm saying? Like some leagues, they would, you know, like, you know, a lot of times, like some, you know, some, you know, whatever, like a hockey or football or baseball team, Yeah. you know, there's 8 million leagues. There's 999 leagues in this country. 
and they play for 999 different trophies. Mm -hmm. You know, you see what I'm saying? And like, well, the NHL, do you think, you know, do you, how much more prestigious is them to say, well, it's okay. We can win our NHA championship. Yeah, no. Nobody cares about nope. that. Nope. They care about the cup. That's you see it. what I'm saying? It's that you see it. But what I'm trying to show is how the cup, you know, was the, you know, was the thing and how that wherever the cup moves, the, you know, the gravitational center of, you know, of, of hockey, you know, basically moves with it. And so, so it transfers out to, you know, so the Vancouver millionaires win it. Um, in 1917, the Seattle Metropolitans become the first American cup winner. They're from the PCHA. They're the Pacific coast. So that, you know, that West coast hockey league takes it back. So in 1916, it went back to the NHL or I say NHA. And then 1917 went back out West and then 1918, um, and this is where, so and the NHA becomes the NHL as okay. we know it today. Okay. The name, the NHL being the reason why, and this is something a lot of people may not know is the NH, the NHA had, had a, had an owner that the rest of the owners could not stand named Eddie Livingston, uh -huh. Eddie Livingston. And they, and they, he had like a deal to be part of their league and there was nothing that could break them off, like to get him rid of the league. And so they basically left him as a single team in the NHA and started their own league, with uh. them, which was the NHL. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right. So they left him. They're like, you want to be in the NHA? We're Fine. Taking be toys the team. And killing it's, home. It, there you go. So the NHL become, that's when the NHL is born. The NHL is born because they wanted to get rid of a, an owner. They didn't like, so anyway, so, okay. So, uh, so 1922, a third league, um, joins the fray called the Western Canadian hockey league. Um, but just a couple of years later, 1925, it merges with um, with that West Coast League, the PC, the uh, PCHA, to join to s form like a, a sort of a, a super league um, called the WHL, which is the Western Hockey League. All right, so um, in 1924, 25, you know, hockey seasons tend to uh, gravitate over two years. Right. So 1924 to 25, um, this WHL, this Western Hockey League, Victoria Cougars uh, win the cup, and they're the last. NHL uh, non NHL team um, to win the Stanley Cup. Oh. And they're like I say, they're part of the, this WHL, which is yeah. this West Coast League, uh, 1924 25. And keep in mind to keep the name in mind, Victoria Cougars, because it's about to become incredibly important. Victoria okay? Cougars. Yes. So Victoria, like Victoria, name. British Columbia, Victoria, <laughs> British Columbia. Um, so, like, you know, West, you know, the Western Canadian Hockey League is where this, um, mm -hmm. where the Victoria Cougars were. And so, anyways, the reason why this is important is because in 1924-25, something happens in the NHL which changes everything. What's that? Okay. What happened? They established a team in Boston. Uh, the Boston Bruins are established. Is this the first one south of the border? Well, no. They, they you, we'd had the the Seattle the Seattle oh. Metropolitans had won. They were the first right, right. Uh, one of the first. They, I don't even want to say they're the first team. They might the, that Western League might have had a, had one or two. Okay, but okay. this was the first like big city, East Coast, East, big city American, right. you know, um, you know, East Coast, big city, you know, to have a hockey team. Yeah. And the, of course, hockey was still in its infancy as far as its you know popular support in 1924-25. However, um, even a third class hockey team in Boston is drawing more money than any other. You know, like you know. You know they're drawing big dollars in in America. They're drawing big money American dollars, yeah. and that just like lit the spark because the very next year they bring in um that they bring a team to Pittsburgh. They bring mm -hmm. a team to the uh, um the, the original team Pittsburgh Pirates, and then the New York Americans. They bring a team to New York, oh. and all of a sudden it's like game over because the NHL is like now. They're, you know, these teams that they're bringing in, they're, they're using the fact that they're, you know, they're Eastern Canadian and they're going South into the American territory, mm. South of their, you know, right there in their territory, Western Canada didn't have that. They didn't have this thing. And so, and so this, and so the NHL just, you know, the, the money they're bringing in, the money they can pay their stars, all these stars are leaving um, the Western hockey league heading out to the NHL. Uh -huh. And so the writing was on the wall and the, in the, uh, in that Western hockey league, WHL, um, they fold. But before they do, and this is really where, um, really where I wanted to get to for the entire show. Yeah. Right. Before they fold, it's um, it's in 1920, it's post 1925, 1926. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, after after that season's over, um, two of these Western Hockey League teams, the Portland Rosebuds and the Victoria Cougars, as we mentioned, the Victoria Cougars already. Yeah. The Portland. So as they're breaking up this league, they're selling the players off to the, the NHL. They're just saying like, we might as well sell the rest of them off, get whatever sure. we can. 
Um, the Portland Rosebuds are sold lock, stock, and barrel, hundred thousand dollars. They're sold to Chicago business, a Chicago businessman named Major Frederick McLaughlin, for a hundred thousand dollars, and he renames that team the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, okay, the Blackhawks. And then there's another team that's sold with, as I already mentioned, the Victoria Cougars. Yeah, they're sold to a group of Detroit businessmen led by Detroit Athletic Club president Charlie Hughes huh. for a hundred thousand dollars. All right, and that team will become the Detroit Cougars. The Detroit Cougars. So that's what's important to see here, and that's where the next slide comes up. So, and, you know, for anybody uh, that can actually oh, I'm see like, the show. I'm playing around here. All right, is this so this one? Yep, there you go. There we so are. I've just got a couple of their logos on the screen, and the, you know, some of the, it's the last team. I love that vintage D, man. Yeah, and so that you can see. So this is what's this is like the primer for like really everything that we're about to go into. The, this so the the Chicago Blackhawks and the Detroit Cougars are both born. The Detroit hockey and Chicago hockey are both 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 born. In the same owners meeting, the same hundred thousand wow. dollar know, a, a franchise fee to buy the team. Yeah, they're born at the same moment. They both entered the NHL together. You see, like they weren't the Red Wings yet, but there was Detroit hockey. That was the direct descendant of um. Oh, so the, above and below. So you got the exactly. Victoria yeah, Pride that's how above. I did that little screenshot there. That and little then design, yeah. The the Detroit Cougars below. Yeah, the Vic it shows you the logo for the Victoria Cougars on the top, okay. and then um, the Portland Rosebuds logo is on the top, and then you can see the arrow point to the first. And that was the last team for the Victoria Cougars and the last team for the Portland Rosebuds, and you know the the first team for the Detroit Cougars and first team for the Detroit uh, Chicago Blackhawks. Yeah. So um and so yeah, so 20, 27 would be the first season. Uh, for both of these two iconic teams, and this is and what I want to keep in you know to context for this, you know, the, you know the reason why I wanted to really begin with this, you know, it's cool to unravel the story of the NHL, but like like I say, to see how it leads up to both of these teams, both entering the you know both entering the NHL at the same time. Yeah, you see, they both came in there, and so like a lot of times, you know, we've I've talked about I think I've briefly talked about rivalries. Yeah. But rivalries in sports are just incredibly important. And a lot of times rivalries, you know, rivalries with these teams, um a lot of times they think that oh it's just because you're close to it like uh, you know Detroit and Chicago are natural rivals and that's true to a certain extent. Yeah. But in many cases there's there, the proximity of it, just like all humans, as we're especially as the, the current political environment we're going uh. through now, but when people are like basically, you know, just throughout the history of mankind, mm. anytime you're anywhere in the same proximity as anyone, okay, like there's going to be friction, there's going to be different situations. And so, you know, the, a lot of times the fact that they're nearby each other means they play each other more. There's more people having, you know, conflict with them. two guys get into a fight and this leads to a thing that lasts, you know, like a, uh, you know, like a, a feud that lasts for years. You know, it brings, it swallows the whole team in. Um, as we're going to see in the ensuing episodes, you know, these two teams come into the league together. And from this point going forward, there is going to be the, the, the escalation of feuds and the escalation of conflict. Um, this is one of the greatest rivalry stories you will ever here mm. and if you in like and if you think that you're you're listening to this show right now you're watching this right now and you think that you know all oh, there's charles make you know saying something bold again <laughs> and like going a little bit too far because i've heard a lot of great right like you know the avalanche and red wings were a tremendous rivalry sure. there's tremendous rivalries through the history of sports ohio state michigan these are tremendous rivalries but wait until you hear what comes next okay this is like the fact that they both come in the league together yeah is the mildest component of this wow. but the fact that they both come in the league together is like a certain symmetry yeah. that sets up like i say what's about to come in the ensuing episodes and um that's really what i wanted to get to for this that's okay. really what i wanted to get to was is how these two teams both come in like but the key thing to understand like i say is uh is mclaughlin frederick mclaughlin and you're gonna have to remember that name major frederick mclaughlin you're, you're gonna hear this guy's name over and over um charlie Char uh, charlie hughes not so much you know the guy that brought the the first detroit team in but um, but uh, Major Frederick McLaughlin is going to be a key component. The owner of this Blackhawks team is going to be a key component of the escalating uh, blood feud, which is going to lead to, like I say, the 1935-36 Red Wings story is, I mean, it's 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 got to be considered for one of the greatest rivalry dogfights of all time. But well, we're still uh, we're still the Cougars. We still got a little ways to go before we we're got Red a long Wings. ways to go before that. We're not going to go too much into the Cougars because yeah. there was an ugly few years that for yeah, them that to get was, off the ground. That was not good. No, the yeah. Cougars were not good. The Falcons were not good. The you know the um, the Blackhawks were, were pretty decent. They were okay. 
um, in their first few years in existence. But um, it, it's going to take um, it's going to de- take a determined owner, yeah, with a grudge, yeah, <laughs> to really with some money and a grudge. I like that to really to really uh, pump some fuel into this rivalry, and uh. that's uh. I don't even think we're going to get to him necessarily. I think I think we're going to get into Norris and them, and ep- you know, the, the, not next episode, but the episode after that potentially, because the next episode we're going to get into like we did with um, Mickey Cochran and like we did with um, like we did with uh, uh, Potsy Clark with the Lions. Um, uh, we've got we're, next episode we're going to be getting into um, uh, Jack Adams. Because Jack Adams, of anyone out there, there is absolutely no one. You know, like I say, Charlie Hughes brought the the, the uh, the Detroit hockey team, you know, the, the hockey team to Detroit, but nobody is, is, should be like the father of the Detroit Red Wings. Um, absolutely. The title for that absolutely goes to Jack Adams. Okay. Um, yep. So, so there was one more image in here. Um, did you, were you, were you touch? Did we need oh, to touch you know, on that's, this kind of like, I guess it was not an essential component. It, this is a, just a couple of the uh, early, early hockey stars. Okay. And these were the, like the, the tobacco cards. Exactly. You get, like, I love tobacco cards. cards. And Dude, I'm such a tobacco card. Like I yeah. love them. I love tobacco cards. You're going to see way more of these things. I just, I, I actually made a, a gold medal plate with like 30 oh. of these on them. Cause I'm just such a, t- I have a bunch. I have these old T206 baseball cards. I love old, t- those old tobacco cards. These are great drawings. They're, They're cool. Uh... Yeah, I mean, those are, you can see the data on 1911. Yeah. Um, those are a couple of the, th- some of the big stars from that time. Okay. Um, Cyclone Taylor, uh, Newsy, Newsy Lalonde. Those are, those two guys are like in the early days of hockey are like just absolute legends. Okay. I mean, they are like, you know, like the Michael Jordans of that time. Um, and then the, t- the bottom, you have uh, Frank and Lester Patrick, which are um, this shows them in their playing days, but they would go on to become massively influential. In they the, were legends. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and not just in, um, not ju- in fact, it was Lester Patrick that sold the Victoria, um, the Victoria Cougars to Charlie Hughes. Oh. He was the owner of that team and a player. And he sold them to them, made a bunch of money. And I forgot one of them went to the one of them went to uh, it was either the Bruins or the I forget. I, I, there's there, that's a whole nother world. Yeah. Um. With those two brothers, but they were mat. They were they were executives. They were coaches. They were executives. They like I mean they were massively influential in the you know the evolution of they, hockey. They were the anchor. Well, there were a couple of them. There was you know quite a few. You got Art Ross. You got all these guys from back then. That are just, you know, there were, you know, there's a reason why they were stars. They were, you know, legends in their day. And then they, you know, they just, you know, it's kind of like the kind of like the early history of baseball where you got a lot of these guys who are players, then they become coaches, they become executives, they become part of the, you know, the building of the game. They just love the game so much that they led to its evolution from a finance, you know, like they a lot of times these guys, they, you know, we look at baseball and a lot of these sports now, and it's just such a it's massive business. But um, the, the the actual architects of the game and the systems that the way that they are today are like completely different than the people that run the games now. Like back, you know, a lot of these guys, and I, I'm not trying to gild the lily of yesterday, saying, mm-hmm. "Oh, all they care, they didn't care about money, they didn't care about anything except for the game." You know, I'm not going to try to go into that because they, I'm sure these guys cared. They wanted to make money. I mean, some of the first baseball teams were founded because the, the owner just wanted to sell beer. You know, like, <laughs> and he knew that there'd be a lot of people, and he could just build a, uh, you know, bring beer into a stadium. So, um. So it's not, and so I don't want to like sit there and say, oh, all they cared about was this. I, that's so trite. I can't even stand it because these players, they care about money. They care about money. I mean, you know, they're not necessarily trying to get rich, but they get to do something they love and they get to make money at the same time. Um, but at the same time, the, you know, they, 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 these are the type of, you know, gen, you know, these are the type of people that build these different sports that um, they do love the game right. so much. And they, you know, they believe in its future. They're, they're, you know, they're at a time when the game is in its infancy and they're, you know, they're trying to sell a product that they love, uh, you know, and it's, so it's, you know, it's a different type of a, um, a person, you know, these people that played the game, they work in the game and then they are, you know, the ones that are like in charge of growing the game and they became absolute legends as a result. And the, you got a few of the names, uh, Newsy and, um, that's uh, uh, Cyclone Taylor. They're more of like they're more legends because of their playing ability. But the Patrick brothers were legends of, in all facets. As right. Jack Adams will, as we're going to see with Jack Adams, there was nothing that Jack Adams was not a legend at. I mean, it's like the honors that he has been given in hockey are minuscule compared to what he what he should have been given. Like he's almost like I mean, the name Jack Adams is kind of remembered, and a lot of times people are going to re- re- going to remember Jack Adams because of like. Because a lot some of the stuff that happened in the um you know the fifties and sixties with Gordy yeah. Howe and Ted Lindsay and stuff like this, but the, the Jack Adams that built this Red Wings team is sorely 
forgotten. Okay. I mean, it's it's sorely forgotten. And that's where we're going to pick up next week. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Now, I Happy teased, Jack. I, Happy Jack. I teased <laughs> people uh, a little bit about uh, uh, something we talked about on the previous show, comments that were coming in. I want to thank Barbara for checking in so far today. And everybody who's Tell been, her, uh, you know, been Barbara? here. Thanks, Barbara. Thanks, Barbara. That's what I said. Yeah. Thanks for popping in. Uh, but we talked about, and it was, uh, it was a post about this guy uh, that uh, that brought it up. Who's this guy up here? Come on, man. That's my favorite player from the Lions. Uh-huh. And from the Spartans. It's Glenn yep. Presnell. It was Glenn Presnell. Yeah. He was the oldest living Spartan. He lived yep. in 99. He's the oldest living NFL player at one point. Right. Overall, yeah. The, the oldest living player in NF right now is Cy Souders. And he's, oh, okay. And I know him personally, and he lives in Sebring, Florida. He's 100 years old. Really? Oh. And he, he is the oldest uh, Lion or professional from the NFL or NHL. NFL, you got NFL. it. NFL, yeah. Uh, he's the oldest player, and he's still living, and I know him wow. personally. Man, I, I probably still won't want to mess with him. Like he probably knocked me. Well, like, well he was like he, a... he was the winner at the Ohio State first championship in 1942. Okay, well, and, it... and he's the only one still living. And when he goes to Columbus, they want him to dot the eye. If oh, there. really? That's cool. And, and, and he's very proud of that. Well, I say uh, he could probably knock me down because, like, the you know, like, because I, you know, I reference a story of my own, which uh, I met a, I met Ted Lindsay up on Mackin Island. I used to work up on Mackin Island. Yeah. I was a doc porter up there for seven summers. And we were like, you know, I'm in my young 20s. I'm a big, you know, tough guy or whatever, you know. And, and I was, we're hanging down at the docks and we're hanging out with a bunch of the other. All we do is handle, you know, you know, uh, you know, and today we, today we drank, uh, you know, um, what was it tonight? We, uh, what was it? Um, Tonight we drink, tomorrow we ride was our slogan. You know, that's right. what people say. Tonight we drink, tomorrow we ride. And that was our that was our slogan thing. So it's just a bunch of like college guys up there. Anyways, we're on the dock this one day and Ted Lindsay comes off the uh. boat or he's waiting for a boat. And we're talking to Ted Lindsay. And, you know, we're just, you know, we're just, it's, you know, not going too deep into anything, but he's just talking to us, whatever. And um, and anyways, he gets on the on the on the uh, Arnold Ferry line and to take off. And somebody, one of the guys in the group that I'm with, he goes, Man, that guy could still kick my butt, man. Uh, that guy, I don't care how old he is. I'm still like kind of scared of that guy. <laughs> like, you know, like that's what I'm referencing when I say like that guy. You know, some of these guys from back in the day, those guys are tough. I don't well, know how old they that are. That was my era. And when you get to Jack Adams, I'll tell you some stories that Gordy Howe told me on Jack Adams. I it's, love it. it. It's beyond your imagination. Well, I know, but then what I'm saying is, is that there's the Jack Adams, and I'm familiar with the Jack Adams of the 50s and 60s, because that what you know what. It's a little outside the scope of the show. We can mention it, but the idea is that there's sort of two different Jack Adams. There's the Jack Adams from the early 19, you know, from the early, you know, 20s and 30s that built this Red Wings club that I mean that was just obsessed with winning, somewhat guarded about this, the future of his job because he's on a one-year annual contract. He was, every year was a year, it was a year-to-year -year deal. And he uh -huh. was on the one-year deal for like 20-something years. You know, he had to prove himself every single year. And so he was somewhat defensive about, you know, it was like just, it was just a raving. I mean, it was just an, it was like a Ty Cobb obsession to win. Um, there was that Jack Adams who in the, you know, in the early days built the club as a result of that obsession to win. And then there was the Jack Adams of the fifties and sixties who was like, it still had that obsession to win, but he was almost became a bit, you know, he, by that point, the organization had been built and he was like a King that was in charge of a right. kingdom that was like, no, you know, no matter how many Stanley Cups he won, no matter how many championships he won, no matter how many amazing players he found, he still wanted more. And it was almost like an obsessive pursuit. And in this case, he was fairly secure in his job and he could just get rid of people and do whatever the heck he wanted to do. So there's sort of two different Jack Adams. And the one that a lot of people remember is the Jack Adams from the 50s and 60s. And we'll talk about that. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. But on the screen, uh, if people watching the video or uh, the audio, there's a picture of uh, Presnell up there. And in episode 18, we were talking about uh, the Portsmouth Spartans uh, coming to Detroit and becoming the Detroit Lions. We had Will Malton with us. Yeah. Uh, Tom was here telling us, uh, telling us about that transition from Portsmouth to, to the Tigers. And, and what came up was the uniform and the colors and uh, the, the, how the colors were picked. And Tom, uh, you had a, a story, I believe that you shared, or, or was it, was that you? I think we both did. Yeah. It's kind of the same story where <clears throat> Presnell is. So um, now Glenn, uh, you guys thought Glenn picked the colors. And then there's a comment on our Facebook on the, uh, on the YouTube video. And it's from Mike Presnell. Well, I do want to hedge my bet. I want to hedge that with something and say that I did see something in one, in, in, a, um, 
I think it was a, even an unpublished memoir by Abby Kushner right. that said that it was also that he had also run the colors past. Um, it, we're talking about George Richards for the Lions owner right. that he had run the colors past his daughter as well. Yep. And that his daughter had also like, I mean, I don't know if it was his daughter first and then he showed the same group of various Jersey colors to press now and he chose them and they both sure. chose the same. But from the, but the story from that, I believe that I think I got it from uh, Abby Kushner was that, um, was that George Richards daughter was also um, in, one of the people that had been pick the colors. Exactly. Those are some hedging that exact All right. thing. So but we, ta we talked about that. Yes. And then uh, Mike Presnell comments on the YouTube video and he said, uh, Glenn is my first cousin, one generation removed. And I'm like, oh my God, that's yeah, cool. That's so cool, a family yeah. member, that's really, yeah. really cool. He said, late, uh, late in your podcast, you were discussing the selection uh, of the Detroit colors. Glenn told me while I was visiting him at his home in 2002 that he and his wife, Catherine, were visiting George Richards, the owner, in his office. Richard had a number of samples laid out in the office, and it was Catherine that told George, George Richards, to go with the Honolulu Blue. So Glenn uh, credits the decision to Catherine. And so, uh, so you knew Catherine as well? Go. I never met her. Oh, I, fair I, play. I, no. And okay. I never, and Will I, Malt might have known her, though, because oh, he was, he was oh, friends Will with Malt, all of them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Will, yeah. Will would know, though. Yeah. yeah. That was his yeah. closest yeah. friend. Yeah, yeah. So now we've got a third potential possibility yeah, is yeah. that there was because Glenn know, and that Catherine, Glenn, you know, exactly that Catherine, decision. not only Catherine, you know, like, you know, I think, I don't know if there's like a, um, like some kind of like Confucius say, like, you know, like one of those like, like sayings or whatever. This is like, you know, sometimes you got to listen to the woman, you know, she says something, you just got to go with it, you know, like yeah. happy wife, happy life type thing. So that's it. So, we, so like, maybe, you know, maybe that was, there was something involved with that in there well, where it, Glenn it, was like, he was like, well, Glenn, what do you think? He's like, I go with her. Yeah, yeah. She's right. <laughs> Great well, we colors. know, we know it took place in the Fisher building. Yes. There we know. We know that for, yeah, we that's, know that. We, we go, got so. those details, but that's an interesting little, uh, yeah. side, you know, so we want to that. thank Mike for uh, commenting yeah, on the YouTube video absolutely. and uh, for listening and for everybody who yeah. who is listening uh, to the podcast, we appreciate you spending some time with us as we uh, as we go through these stories. Uh, I'm I'm enjoying the the heck out of it, and we're gonna do some more next time. The website is uh, just Detroit City of Champions. You can get the books there. Yeah, all kinds there's of some uh, there's stuff, some yeah. other like hidden gems. There's that play ball play ball video that comes with yeah. book number two. Yep, exactly. Uh, there's another video. There's T shirts, hoodies, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. So yeah. uh, Detroit City of Champions and then, uh, on Facebook uh, as well. We throw things up there, and when the video goes, and live, also too is I'm uh, I'm in these. There's these. Uh, there's these. We have these stores in the mall, and this is yeah. like where I do a lot of my work because I get to. I actually sell my product in these stores, and you're actually going to find me just kind of hanging out in the mall. It's a, um, I, I do my I actually get a quite a bit of work done in a mall on a slow day, yeah. And so I kind of hang out. It's almost like an office. I get you know we I, have, I talk about sports all day with people. It's crazy. Tom comes in there every once in a while. <laughs> we sit, Tom will pull up a chair and hang out for a half hour or so. Nice. Um, and so awesome. anybody's listening to the show, if you're ever at um at uh, Laurel Park Mall in Livonia or uh, 12 Oaks Mall in Novi or um, Partridge Creek in Clinton Township, the store is called Inspire Marketplace. It's, a, um, it's like a in, year round indoor Michigan. You kind of bounce between the three of them. Yeah, I bounce. I'm, I'm mostly right now. I'm mostly at Laurel Park. I yeah. would probably going forward in March, April, going forward, I'll probably be in 12 Oaks most of the time. I'd set, you know, like weekends like saturdays i'm at parts creek yeah, yeah. and um it's crazy i there's I, I we talk sports in there it's like a little sports haven it's almost like a barbershop type uh, thing but it's like an art show you know like where people at barbershops talk about stuff yeah it's kind of like that you know we pontificate about philosophy and stuff we talk about whatever so um but anyways it's a year it's like a year-round indoor art show um there's uh you know there's all you know anybody's looking for a gift for somebody maybe i should be talking about this more before christmas yeah, but, yeah. um but it's a great little spot you come yeah. in there visit me you want to talk you want to get the book or you know get measured for a shirt or a hoodie or whatever there you <laughs> are. the measurement is like xl large double x you know not, <laughs> i don't measure it with a measuring tape it's just <laughs> pick out a shirt and give me hold that up to you. yeah that um, looks good that looks yeah good. <laughs> taking that home with you all right what's your point there that picture there, that uh, of the lions. Oh yeah, uh, well Tom, Spartans. yeah, Tom brought us the. the, the that's the what, that's the original Spartans right there. Since we were talking about. Glenn. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah where's Tom? Yeah, um, yeah, can we throw this camera? So Tom, uh, Tom, camera, so. Tom brought these in. Um, this is a uh, original. It's a nineteen. It's a picture. It looks like the. We were looking at it pretty closely the other day. Yeah. It's a photo that somebody gave him a while back. That's uh, um from Portsmouth. That it's is 90, uh, it's, 91 years old. Yeah. So this is a, this is what, this it's is the first, uh, this is the, uh, the lineman from the first, we were, that's, we were able to track it out because it doesn't have press now. It doesn't have, um, Dutch Clark. Clark or anybody in it. Um, but it does have, it's all offensive linemen. It does have, um, 
Um, it does have Claire Randall. It's got, it's got all the main guys on it. Harry Ebding, um, uh, uh, Christensen, uh, Tarzan Christensen. Yeah. On it. They're all there. Oh, yeah. It's got all the it's got all the main linemen. I was just cool. It must have taken a like I say. There must, there's probably a companion photo of that that was like all the backs. You know, with the with all the um where it was just the backs because this is looks like I say all just the linemen because. I can't think of any reason in the world why you wouldn't have Dutch Clark or. <laughs> or to get, I think you know, I think I think it goes right back guys to, in it. to 1930. Really no, this got that thing is. Well, what do we when we say it was Potsy's first year? 19 uh, we, was it? What is it? 30, 32, I think. When, no, he was really. Oh, than he made the coach Potsy. Yeah, he came in in 31. I yeah, think. 31. That's what I'm saying this is, but this is I think Potsy's first year because because George Christensen was a rookie. You know, Potsy's first year was um George Christensen's first year. So you can't put George before Potsy. And so whatever year at the very no matter what, when no matter what year it was, um, it, it wasn't before Potsy was right. there. That's what right. I'm saying. And so it's got George Christensen um and these guys that were not there before right. um before Potsy. So that's what I'm saying. At the very least, it that, was that Potsy's picture first came year. from a lady that watched and went to many a Spartan game, and she held on to that picture for almost 90 years. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, so I it might she might have taken it. I mean, what are they? I mean, they don't just hand out photos there. Yeah, yeah. Just, Bob Morton have taken. It wasn't bobblehead night. Yeah. It's, it's you know. <laughs> Bob, <laughs> Bob, Bob gonna... Morton gave that to me, and uh, like I said, the, the ladies when she gave it to him to give it to me, yeah. she said those were my. And Bob Spartans. Morton's worth mentioning, giving a little bit of a note or you know, to you know, Bob has passed, but Bob Morton oh, is an is, absolute oh, legend, and like oh, he's, oh, yeah. he's Bob Morton is the morals, uh, the murals, you know. Yeah, Bob Morton was did a lot for Portsmouth, like you know, to remember the Spartans, to um, yeah. uh, to, you know, for just for sports, you know, sports, you know, history, and in, in Portsmouth is just an absolute yeah. icon. So and he, and he loved baseball. Big time. He, yeah, he's yeah. He sent me an article about the. I did an interview for that for that newspaper down there about bringing a baseball team down there. He's the one that sent us the newspaper article. He sent it in the mail. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. So yeah, he's he's Bob. Bob's awesome. You know, he was you know to yep. rest in peace. He, he was a he was he was, uh, um, he was awesome, man. Yeah. He was my connection in Portsmouth. I mean, um, I got all the information yeah. and I was introduced to him and I spoke yeah. at his Rotary Club on the Spartans. Yeah. Um, no, he was cool. Yeah, so just at least good, good to mention, get his yeah. name out there a little bit. Yeah, yeah. All right, more hockey next time, and uh, we'll be back with more uh, Detroit, the city of champions. Wow.